So what's good y'all? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I decided to go ahead and just vlog about my upcoming experience. If you don't know, I'm about to do my first marathon, 26.2 miles. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a crazy achievement for me. I'm definitely crossing something off the list that I had there for a very, very long time. And honestly, I just was scared to actually get out there and try it. But uh, I'm about to go inside Dick's and buy a couple uh, Dick's Sporting Goods to buy a couple last minute items. But uh, yeah, man, come along for the ride. Let's go. Good old Dick Sporting Goods. Know exactly where I'm trying to get to. Yes, sir. Saw this a while ago. Knew I was gonna come back and get it. Uh, need that large. Where the large at? Kind of like a girl shirt though, a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Hmm. Yeah, so pretty much this is what I decided to go with. It's a Nike dry fit shirt, you know what I'm saying? And the shorts that I'm going to use are very similar to these right here. The Nike dry fit. Then I'm also going to have the Sakonis. And I'm going to have a hat. A, probably a bright color hat just so I can bring some more attention on to myself, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, that's the drip for the for the marathon. All right, Josh, I just got back in the car. Um, Dick's Sporting Good. It's a great store, great store. If I go in there, stay in there too long, I'm gonna spend a lot of money. So I'll try to get out of there and not like a robbery every time. But uh, I appreciate all the support, all the tips I've been getting for this marathon. Uh, man, my approach meant with it is just to, you know, take it nice and easy, get to the turnaround point or the halfway point. And then I will, you know what I'm saying, gauge it on if I want to push my pace based off of that. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I'm approaching this, this endeavor. All right. So welcome back. So if you don't know, I just ran 26.2 miles. This is post race day, post race day recovery. A um, couple key things. Hey, you see I'm rocking the ice. You know what I'm saying? I earned this from running 26.2 miles. I'll give you all a close up on this here shortly. So let's talk about the race, man, and, and some things that I took um, from the race before we get into how I prepared. So if you don't know, Hey man, the last like two miles of the race, I, I damn near was was walking slash like we call it airborne shuffling. Hey, my legs completely cramped out from my calves to my hamstring to my thighs. It's completely cramping. Every time I try to lift my my knee off the ground, um, I was I was hit with just this excruciating cramp pain in, in, in either one of my legs. So it was it was uh, resorting to me having to pretty much walk for the last two miles. I will say that my conditioning was pretty like up to par to say the least because my like 
my breathing, like as far as my, my body felt amazing, but my legs just gave out overall. So we finished that uh, roughly four hours, 53 minutes. Uh, not bad for my first marathon. Of course, I kind of did set out to do, um, you know, not to exceed three hours, but you know, I said, hey, it is what it is. Um, the terrain, so we ran in Cary, North Carolina. I will say that the course um, was not properly marked, because I mean, like, for some areas of the course, it was trail, others was uh, was actually like roadway. And you kind of find yourself having to, you kind of find yourself having to think and look at signs versus, you know, a simple out and back route. I mean, it probably doesn't like mean a lot to, to somebody if you're running like, you know, I'm, you know what I'm saying, like four miles. But when you're running like 26 miles and you're tired, you're already feeling like a zombie. Just that small little thought can, can throw off your, your rhythm, throw off your cadence. Um, the, the weather for the day was actually pretty decent. We started out at roughly about 7.30 in the morning. It was a little cold out, uh, but slightly rainy, a little small drizzle. We took off, started drizzling a little more. But uh, overall, by the time we got to the end of the race, it was sunny and old, and it kind of resulted in being like the perfect day uh, to run. Um, for the route, I will say that they could have had more water points out there. Cause it, it was some certain stretches where I was literally looking for like, you know what I'm saying, just a, just a small, uh, like a small help of hand of, of uh, just some water that I could give to kind of restore myself, replenish myself. Um, overall, the environment was really, really cool. A lot of motivating people. I think the fastest mill ran it at like three hours and 30 minutes. Um, and definitely shout out to my marathon team that was out there with me. You know what I'm saying? Sully and uh, and we call him Gucci uh, Guterres. Shout out to them, man. All right, yep. So like I said, now we'll go into the actual like prep work leading up to the race. Uh, as you may know, I'm also active duty military, so I had to still encompass like my normal PT regimen with my unit and also simultaneously train for a marathon. Uh, I do not recommend <laughs> anybody attempts that. Only because uh, with my unit, you know, I'm kind of focusing on speed work, you know, trying to maintain a fast two mile. Um, also incorporating that I'm trying to, you know, compete with my soldiers, compete with my NCOs, compete with my, my officers and, and, you know, just, you know, bring out the best, you know, run times or, or whatever scores we're at for the day. So trying to like maintain like a fast two mile and also train for 26.2 miles is just completely two different intervals. So I kind of struggled with that. Um, I decided that I was gonna wear, run a marathon probably about like a month out from the actual day of execution. So I do not recommend that to anybody. Um, definitely take your time and and when, when you're planning to do a marathon, I would say like no less than, um, no more than like three months out, you should probably start training for, for, for a 26.2 mile run. I'll say that because uh, although my conditioning was great, like I said, my legs gave out. And I believe that if I was to possibly incorporate more longer runs in my training regimen, probably could have held up a lot better um, for that, for the marathon. Um, in my training, I only hit um, the highest uh, miles ran for one run, only 15 miles. Um, taking advice from people who actually do marathons, uh, within 30 days out from the actual day of execution, uh, I probably didn't have enough time to put my body under that stress of running longer runs and then also have a good marathon. So maybe if I'd have had like a three mile, I mean, excuse me, a three month like training regimen to lead up to the to the marathon, I probably could have did a lot better. Um, but we, I mean, being active duty, we we always are at a loss of time or we have less time than what we actually think actually think. So kind of have to just react and, and just make and just make it happen based off of what was happening in my life. Um, I will say that I'm completely happy with how my body held up. Even today, like I feel like amazing. Like I don't feel like that bad. My legs are a little sore. I'm practicing some, some day-to-day stretching here and there, but I think for the most part, I'm gonna be good to go for PT um, on Tuesday morning because this is Columbus weekend, so we got Monday off. All right, guys, so let's talk about the gear that I wore while I was running. So we're gonna start from top to bottom. I had on a nice, and I'm gonna drop a picture for y'all too so y'all can see everything. So had on a nice dry fit Nike hat. Um, overall, kept me cool throughout the whole entire process. Um, no issues with that. Also had this real, real cool Nike um, 
dry fit, like marathon type tank top. It was really, really loose. Um, man, I, I barely even felt like I was wearing anything. Um, it was breathable in the back, breathable around the front, had a bunch of holes in it, so it just breathed like too smooth. Then I had on a waist pack. I forgot where the waist pack was from, but um, I had two water bottles and also had a pocket in the front, so it held, held like my inhaler, held my um, my headphones once they died, and held those, and it also held all of my, my gels. Um, the waist pack did get a little loose on the start. It was kind of moving around a lot, but I was able to quickly um, tighten it down, probably by like the third or fourth mile, and it, it didn't move for the rest of the entire race. Then I had on some Nike Dry Fit um, running shorts. They had the spandex uh, on the bottom, and then they also had, the, the, of course, the Nike shorts on top. Really, really nice. Don't recommend, this might be too, like TMI, but I recommend you don't you wear underwear with those. Only simply because it kind of cuts down friction, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then for my socks, I had just some Adidas, uh, like dry fit socks. Real simple, really thin, but also very cushioning um, for my feet. And then I had on the uh, Saucony Endorphin 3s uh, to run in. Um, really, really good shoes. I will say that I wish I probably went like up a half a size. So I wear 11, probably should wear like 11 and a half because I mean, when you're running like long distance, like your feet are gonna expand. Um, and I kind of felt that like towards the end. Luckily, um, I looked at my feet, I don't have like any blisters, anything like along those lines. So I don't know, like if you if you, if you you know what I probably should do, should I like maintain the shoes that I got or go up half a size? I mean, overall they held up real good, feet don't feel bad, but you know, let me know, should I, should I go up a size or should I just stay where I'm at? For the people who actually, you know, do the marathon training and everything else. Um, I had my Garmin. Um, Phoenix 6 Plus uh, to track my run. But overall, it's pretty accurate. It put me at 26.19 and not 26.2. So the route may have been a little more longer than, than what they tracked it at, but I mean, hey, it is what it is. Um, what else did I have on? I believe that's it for the most part. I carried my phone. I kind of um, like went back and forth between carrying my phone in my hand and also putting it inside of my pocket in order to, you know, get that good running form uh, and able to push and kick through. Um, that pretty much sums it up for the things that I wore. I do recommend that you practice running with a waist pack prior to actually doing your 26.2 uh, mile marathon because uh, I did not practice with a waist pack and I kind of wait, wait like the last week to incorporate that into, you know, my, my normal runs. And I will say that, like, I was taking my gels and with the gels, right, and y'all can, like, give me some insight on this. When I would take them, I would, like, immediately feel, like, slight pain in my stomach. So I don't know if I was experiencing, like, some gastric distress or maybe I need to, like, look at, you know, some other, some other forms of, of rehydrate, other forms of rehydration with the gels. But um, yeah, yeah, that pretty much incorporates everything that I carry with me on the on the race. Now, what I wish I had, I just wish I had. Oh, inside of my water cans, I also had a trail, a mixture of Trail Wind, which is endurance fuel uh, electrolytes, um, inside of my two water bottles. So I kind of I drank like half. Uh, my bottle every three miles to kind of keep my my nutrition game at all t at, a, at a good at a good height. Um, I will also say that I wish that that I would have carried just more water uh, for me for me maybe a pack of hydration pack next time. Then again, I don't know, man. Maybe just my route or this kind of marathon was just just not good on water points. If you ran marathons where they have like more water points, definitely let me know. I'll probably come to that one next time and not the one I just did. But there was like, like for ours, there was like a swamp area that had like a, a, a wooden bridge. And I think that, I think the area is probably like two, maybe like three miles uh, worth of stretch. And along that entire time, like there is no water point. It's kind of like an island. Um, so yeah, I just wish I had more water on my pack. All right, Josh, we about to kind of summarize everything. We're going to talk about like my prep leading up to the race, and then we're going to talk about uh, my post-race recovery, and then my future expectations for, you know what I'm saying, what's going on for, for as far as my fitness goes. So leading up to the race, I was probably averaging about 25 to 30 mile uh, run weeks, 
Um, I would try to do at least one long, slow run per uh, week. That run probably would be like roughly between seven to 10 miles. And uh, then I still have my normal like PT regimen, which was mostly off speed work it would be four miles as fast as you can, you know, chase them behind my soldiers, chase them behind my NCOs. Or it would be um, like a, a long, slow, like unit run. And then just kind of working in like my long, slow run whenever I had time to, to get to it. Um, overall, my prep, I think it was decent for the time that I was given. Like I said, I only had 30 days to really get ready and kind of lock in for it. And the execution portion, I'm very, very happy with how my body performed. I got no regrets with that. I just say I just probably need to give myself more time uh, next time. Now, uh, for post recovery, I'm going to just incorporate a lot of stretching, a lot of, uh, of resting for sure, um, a lot of rehydration. And overall, I just kind of just, just really, really just, you know, enjoy the moment, you know, really enjoy the success for a little while because, you know, we accomplished something that, you know, not a lot of people get to go out and do and, you know, and we're still standing. I do already feel that I'm going to come back even like more stronger once my healing process is over. Just going to take it slow and kind of, kind of work my way back into, into, you know, my new up and coming goals. Now, uh, moving forward, like as far as fitness for me goes, uh, I'm about to enter a small bulk season. Uh, this is for a really, really good reason. I'm not going to uh, disclose this reason to the masses just yet, but I think some of y'all might know why I'm about to put on some weight. Um, about to get on a test boost, kind of going to work on, you know, getting some, some muscular hypertrophy, try to build some, some, some good lean muscle mass while also maintaining a good cardio foundation, really work on my endurance. And I'm also probably giving away like the tips of what I'm about to do here coming shortly. So uh, overall, man, we are very, very happy with the way things turned out. Um, I will be doing another marathon in the future. I'm just like way, way more excited um, now to accomplish, to accomplish a marathon. Now that I've already done one, I know how it feels, know what to expect, know what to prepare for. And um, yeah, man, just overall very, very happy with, with, with everything and how we stand. Um, Keep in mind that just like the body is a very, very amazing thing. Like I'm overcoming uh, being asthmatic, uh, multiple just injuries with being in the military, um, being 200 plus pounds, running a, a marathon and just a whole lot of other ailments. So I'm just very, very happy with how we performed and just keep in mind that if I can do it, like a lot of y'all can, can also do it. Um, with that being said, bro, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if y'all got any tips, you know, for marathon running for, you know, my endurance athletes, definitely tap in, plug me in, let me know what's up. Uh, just like always, um, everything comes from me straight to you. And I look forward to hearing from you all in the future. And um, yeah, man, just tap in, let me know something. And see y'all next time.